Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris Man. As always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. <clears throat> At this point in time, well, I guess I'm going to tell you this a true story. I was uh, working last night in the studio with my band as far as uh, my upcoming CD, and I was talking with the drummer, and he mentioned a story that I shared with him years ago. And he said, man, you ought to post that on your YouTube channel because uh, I think your views have found it interesting. And I thought about it last night. I said, you know what? I think they would, too. Because I think at some point in everybody's life, there's something you just can't explain it. You just can't explain it. And here, here's the story. This had to have been back in the 90s, early 90s. Man, it had to have been late 80s, early 90s. Probably early 90s. And I was at the height of, <clears throat> I guess it was actually not the height, but just getting started with my production work. Because people at that point in the city realized that uh, I was a good producer and not just a guitar player. And at that time, they thought I was just a keyboard player because a lot of people didn't even know I played guitar because that was during the time when synthesizers was kicking in. I put my guitar up under the bed because I'm like, ain't nobody hiring us bass players and guitar players. They want that synth thing, synth bass line and synth piano parts. So I played a, a good enough during that time to, to do that and play in these bands. So uh, I came across so I, I came across this guy. He was a promoter, really nice guy, and put a, sent a lot of business my way. Uh, <clears throat> I met him at a, at a gig, and then he said, hey, I got a lot of uh, acts, man, that I want you to produce. So he sent me a lot of guys. And it's a small word because he was related to Kevin. I forgot his last name in the in the, the original bass player for Al Hudson in one way. <clears throat> that was his nephew, I believe. So uh, he brought one group by, and I wrote a couple of tunes and uh, did a couple of demos on them, and then they disbanded. It was three of them. It's kind of like after seven. You know, that was kind of their vibe. So uh, one of the guys contacted me <clears throat> about maybe six months later and said, I'm working on a solo project because he said, I had a call and I'm, I'm going to do the gospel. I'm not doing that booty shaking R&B type of thing no more. So well, I can respect that. But I really don't do gospel. You know, that's just not my thing. It's, I got nothing against it. It's just not my training. I didn't grow up in church, you know. Uh, I attended throughout the years, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you I went to church every day because I didn't, you know. Every Sunday, I didn't, you know. Uh, we were too busy trying to survive and eat, you know. It's like, God, understand that. But anyway, so I reluctantly did it. And I, I did it because I try to help out everybody, especially people I've already worked with. I said, you know, I do my best, man. But I'm telling you now, you know, it's just not my thing. So uh, he came back because he, he wanted me to do actually two songs. One of them was called, if I'm not mistaken, it's kind of a traditional gospel song. It's called... The man that came down to earth. And I think sometimes it's referred to as the man from Galileo. So uh, he came back and brought me the sheet music. And at that time, I really couldn't read sheet music. So I, I brought, I took it to, I called my brother-in-law, made a call, said, hey, I need you to come in and uh, work with me on this session. I know, uh, give you some of the, uh, some of the uh, proceeds. So uh, I went by my brother-in-law's house. I gave him the sheet music. And then about, Maybe two days later, he came into the studio and he played the piano part. So uh, we completed that project and he was very happy. And <coughs> I'm going to say this because it's important just as a learning tool. You learn as you keep doing things. And what I learned at that in that particular session, because, uh, of course, there was three verses to the song and he came back one day did one verse, then came back the next day or so, because, you know, the schedule, did the second verse, and then did the third verse. Now, uh, I never have my singers do that anymore. I'm like, come in and sing the whole song from start to finish, because this is what happens. You sing something on Monday, you come back on Wednesday and sing another part of that song. It sounds totally different from the audio aspect and from the vocal approach. It's uh, from the mic aspect. It sounds different. And it's like it sounds like three different guys singing this song. So uh, we end up having to do it over. And I, and I learned that time because some people can pull that off. There's some guys can come in on Monday, then Thursday, then Saturday. And it's, it sounds right. But that particular session is like, no, it sounds like three different dudes. So we had to do it over. But uh so we did it. He was happy. And throughout the years, I would see him on, I guess they call it in Chicago, Can TV, where uh, the city sponsored channels. He would, he, would, he, he would do this 
talk show and talk about religion, you know, talk about scriptures in the Bible. So it was nice to see him throughout the years still. And still, you know, what happened to those guys? So uh, I'm going to try to make a long story short. So about four years after, you know, seeing him on TV and years after doing that the video, I was living in Chicago at the time. I was about to pack him and go to New York. So I came home one day. Because I was technically not really staying there. You know, I leased the place, but I really wasn't staying there. So, uh, you know, I had my answer machine. I hit the play button. And, uh, I had one message on there. And it said, uh, I think you're the person I'm looking for. You know, my, my name is blah, blah, blah. And my my ne my uncle name was Robert whatever. And, uh, you know, he passed away recently. And uh, I came across as I was packing up his personal belongings, a cassette of a song that he performed that it says on the album cover or the cassette that you produced it and uh you know you produced it so i'm looking for a copy of that because she said it wasn't in the case in the cassette case it's just an empty cassette case with the artwork so she said if you are the person that did this you know and i and, and the right person i'm trying to reach please give me a call back so i called back and i said you know i'm sorry to hear about the death of your uncle uh, I'd be more than happy to give you a copy of that, you know. So I said, uh, I'll give you a call back in about two days because I'm sure he's around here. And, uh, you know, so the conversation ended. So I went looking for it and I couldn't find it. Uh, and, and I'm one of them people where I, I'm very organized. I got the very first tape that I we did when I first started performing in my buddy's basement back in the 70s. I mean, I still got that tape. As a matter of fact, I transferred it over, over to DVD so it won't get lost. And I've made cop copies of it, you know. And I couldn't find it. And I was like, what the hell? So what happens is this. Every song that you hear final last on the, out on the radio or you go by, there's drafts. That's not the, 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 the first and only attempt of doing that song. You start off with kind of the, the draft, the skeleton as far as, okay, the bass line. Or uh, a piano, and you come back and say, no, I don't like that bass line. Let me try this bass line with the piano. I couldn't find nothing. I couldn't find the finalization, the master. I couldn't well, I couldn't find the cassette, uh, the two-track. I couldn't find the masters to the song, because I always keep my masters. I couldn't find the drafts. So I said, you know what? Let me call my brother-in-law, because he had a copy of it, because he played on it. So I called him. He said, yeah, I'm sure I got it around here. So he, he looked around two days. So he said, I can't find mass. I can't find because I he had more than one copy, he couldn't find them. So then I called the guy that did the design photo or uh, the layout of the of uh, of the cassette, you know, because uh, uh, I gave him copies, you know. And I called him, and he said, "Yeah, I'm sure I got it." He couldn't find his. I'm like, "What are the chances of three guys who are known for organization, not sloppy, couldn't find nothing?" You know. And I'm like, again, for me personally, I had to master. I had the copies that I ran the masters off. Then I had the drafts. I couldn't find none of them. So, you know, we found that to be quite pretty interesting because to this day, nobody found a copy of it. They say, like, what happened? And uh, the only thing I can think of is uh, we were doing gospel. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, you can draw your own conclusion, but it's just highly unlikely that that particular recording, actually it was two of them, got away from everybody. Everybody, three people in the story and got away from everybody, you know, because the stuff that we've done together in the, in the past, we can all find copies of the, the other songs. But it's like this particular song, nobody can find their copy. I couldn't find, again, the master. I couldn't find a two track that I dumped the mat from the master to one two. I couldn't find a draft because I know I did some drafts on that song because I'm like, uh, I got to come up with a. You know, an arrangement that that'll work. Cause again, uh, my forte is not in gospel, and I did one more gospel tune, and then I said, you know what, this is ain't this apparently ain't what I'm supposed to be doing, so I'm not doing it no more. Because uh, the 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 second one I did, and and I found this really interesting. Uh, I did it for this woman, and then in the middle of it, she brought her uh, her two adopted kids over and i see how bad she was treating these kids and somebody told me because uh you know you don't know what you don't know i mean i never uh adopted any kids so i don't know but 
here's what somebody told me. And this does not apply to everybody, but this is what somebody told me. They said the majority of those people don't give a shit about those kids. They're just getting money from the state. I was like, oh, my God. You know, I was like, man, because I got a soft spot in my heart for children. And I said to myself, it's bad enough that these children didn't have, uh, weren't fortunate enough to grow with their mother and father, regardless if they were good people or bad people. And now they got to be shuffled through the system and in, and, and in the care of people that don't give a shit about them. And when I seen her carrying on like that with her, her children, I said, you know what? I'm going to stop this production because I, I, I wasn't feeling this from the beginning and I've expressed that but you kept pressing me because uh, she went through the the promoter uh, the promoter knew her and he told her about me so uh, I was trying to be nice but I said you know what I'm going to give you all your money back and we're done you know we're done even though we were actually done with the project but there was some little finalizations that she wanted to do keep coming back I'm like no here's all your money back all of your money and I wish you well Cause uh, that kid thing kind of kind of really set me off. I was like, no, I can't deal with you no more. Cause you're toxic. You're evil. You're not even a pleasant person. Three years later, I'm sitting on my couch, and I think I had I had laid down cause I was tired. I turned over. I had the TV on, and I hear this song on the TV. I'm like, oh, what? Wait a minute. It was my song. It was a song I did for her. She was still singing that song like three years later, you know. But I found that to be interesting in the other story too. I don't do gospel no more. It's like, no, mm -mm. ain't my forte. Uh, it's not something that I'm really great at, you know, because I try to do stuff that I think I'm really good at. And I leave the stuff alone that I don't think I'm that good at. But, you know, I had people kind of asking me and begging me. I was like, OK, just to help you guys out, I will do this. But I'm like, from that point on, I left that alone. I'm like, no, no more doing that stuff. No. So until next time, take care. I hope that you found this story kind of interesting. But again, to this day, to this day. Can't find a copy. None of us. I check periodically with, you know, my uh, photo designer, late, the layout guy, because he's a good friend of mine, and my brother-in-law, of course, and to this day, we still can't find a copy of that. I'm still finding stuff that I, I hadn't seen in years that I did, because there's just one session I just said, man, is that me playing guitar? Because it was like I was in a whole other era during that time, because I'm like, I'm doing stuff I would not normally do. And that's, I think, because I had just got a classical guitar and I just went crazy. I was like, okay, I'm going to do all this kind of stuff since I can't do an electric. But that other, those other, that other two songs, can't find them. So until next time, take care. Thanks for watching.